Hi, and welcome back to my shop. I'm trying to get my walnut necklace display case wrapped up, and my next step is gonna to be to apply the hinges. I need to mortise the hinges on the back piece before I can install that and put it in place, and then I need to also mortise out the, the hinge mortises on the top as well and then that will pretty much do it for the hardware. The only tricky part is I had a lot of difficulty finding nickel hinges. My client didn't want any brass on this project, and those were a little bit hard to track down. The other challenge I ran into is that I couldn't find a mating knob for the top here, so I'm gonna see if I can find something uh, or find some way to fashion a walnut pull here so that I don't have to find you know, a piece of hardware made out of metal that matches these exactly. Once I've gotten that wrapped up, um, I can start thinking about my finish, and then all I have to do is install the angled shelf that's gonna go inside this case, and I'm gonna wrap that in velvet so that it'll uh, you know, really protect the necklace that's going to be displayed in here. So now I have my mortises cut on both sides. So the trick is now I need to be able to transfer those exact same markings to my top piece that's gonna receive the mating hinge mortises. So if I just line these up and then flip this top piece around, then I can basically just clamp these together and extend the marks from my first piece to the second piece, and then just repeat the process for cutting the hinge mortises just like I did on the top. Like so. If you'll recall, I have a 10 degree bevel on the top of the door. And I did buy stop hinges, but these stop hinges are designed for a uh, 90 degree installation. These are actually set at 100 degrees instead of 90 degrees. So that gives you 10 degrees beyond vertical so that the door won't slam shut. But because these are designed for a 90 degree hinge application instead of this 100 degree hinge application, I need to get these to open another 10 degrees. So I'm actually just gonna use a rotary tool. And if I remove some of the material here and here, it'll actually allow this hinge to open a little bit further. So I just have to fine tune it until I get it to 110 degrees or I'm sorry, 120 degrees instead of the current 110 degrees. So that's how I'm gonna make sure that the box top won't, won't slam shut. Now that the box construction is all complete, my hinges are ready to go. The last thing that I need to do is to affix some sort of handle to the front of the, the door. Um, you want to be able to open this easily. There is a little bit of an overhang here, but I'm worried that it's not enough to grab onto and you could accidentally let go and again, let the front fall and glass could break. So I tried to find uh, nickel coated or nickel plated hardware for the front to match the hinges, but I really couldn't find anything. So what I suggested to my client instead is that I make something out of walnut. So I'm planning to do just a small sort of arced little lift that I'll put into a mortise in the front of this box. And I'll make that lift the exact same thickness as that mortise so I can just slide it right in. It'll almost work like a biscuit in a, in, from a biscuit joiner. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Here I have some of the leftover spline stock, and this is actually the perfect width for me to use. I've kind of gone back and forth and determined that I need about a 3 8 of an inch uh, lift to extend out of the front of the box, and that's plenty of material to be able to uh, grab onto and, and lift up, and this happens to be three quarters of an inch. So I can you know, basically bury half of this into a mortise and then let the remaining half stick out. So all I need to do is cut a little bit of an arc on a piece of this and that'll make it kind of pleasing to the eye. And then I'll probably just do the same on the other side and basically make this look like a biscuit and then I can use a slot cutter to cut the mortise in the front of the box.
Now I just need to find the center of my top, make a mark there, and then I can bring it over to the router table. Now that I know where the center of the front is, I can line that up with the center of the nut on top of that slot cutting bit. And then I just slide this stop over. And that is how I'm going to ensure that when I rock this into the bit, I'll keep it centered and it won't move left to right. And then after a little bit of fine tuning, I've got this lift just the right size and shape. So I'll be able to glue that in there and that'll give me a nice solid means for being able to open and close the box. Now to glue this in, I'm going to use glue very, very sparingly because this is really not an area where I want to have to be dealing with any glue squeeze out. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just on the, the far end back here. And it really isn't going to require a ton of glue for this thing to stay in there. It's really not going to have any real force exerted against it once it's installed. Put a little on the back as well. And very carefully slide it in. And I'm still getting glue squeeze out. No matter how hard I try. And then to clamp this, I'm actually going to apply pressure top to bottom. And that'll basically pinch that slot a little bit and make sure I get a good glue bond. So I will come back before that glue dries and scrape out the excess. I've taken my clamp off and scraped out any of the excess glue. So I actually have a really nice fit there. The last thing I need to do before I can start finishing is I need to cut these retainer strips to length first. These are the strips that are going to hold the glass in place. It's going to sit on this rabbit here and then I'll tack these in on top. And I'm not going to use any glue so that will mean that if the glass were to ever break you could actually, you probably have to break these to get the glass back out but at least you could replace the glass. You just need to build new cleats. Um, but I do want to pre-finish these so that when I tack them in place they already have the finish applied. So I've mitered one end and then marked my other end and I'll just go miter that at the miter saw. After sanding up to 220 grit and breaking my edges, I'm now ready to start putting on the finish. I'm really eager to see how this walnut ends up looking. I just finished applying that first coat of oil and I'm really happy with the results. The walnut's got a lot of figure and it's got some really cool grain so it's really popping out. Now I just need to manage a couple of the finishing touches. So I've ordered a piece of glass. I actually ordered this online from One Day Glass, I believe is the name of the company. And I had it sized exactly so it drops right in there. And then, since I have these cleats already pre-finished, I can just put them in the corners and then I'm just going to use my um, pin nailer and just put a couple of pins in there. And the reason I'm not going to use any glue is that if at any point this glass does break, 
you would be, you'd probably have to destroy these cleats to get the glass out, but at least you would be able to replace the glass. You wouldn't have to actually destroy the frame itself. I'm just gonna use a little piece of cloth as well to protect the glass when I shoot in the pins. My customer specifically asked for black velvet, so that's what I'm gonna use. And I got, I think this is a half a yard. And I'm just gonna cut it a little oversized and then I'm gonna use some of this cloth tape to apply to the back of the MDF. And then I'll just roll this over and then I'll just cut the corners at an angle so that I don't have uh, the corners all bunched up. Now I can actually see the hinges in action for the first time and that I have that positive stop uh, 10 degrees beyond 90 uh, taking into account all of the corners or the angles of the case. So that worked out perfectly. And I don't want to forget my little felt circles either. I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm actually putting this on upside down. I'm gonna lay it in place and then I'm gonna actually stick it to the top of the lid because it'll be less visible there. So now I've got my felt circles on the lid, get a nice soft close. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of wax and then I just need to clean the glass and then this thing is gonna be ready for delivery. Is there anything blue tape isn't good for?